Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This time I want to show you how to configure Entra workload identity in your AKS cluster to access securely Azure resources. The plan for today is that first I'm going to show you what Entra workload identity is. Then I'm going to explain you the authentication workflow. And afterwards, we're going to create an AKS cluster with workload identity enabled. And then we are going to test workload identity and access an Azure Key Vault. Okay, so what is workload identity and why would we want to use it? Um, first, let's talk about how to authenticate in Azure. So we want to use identities over username and passwords. A uh, username and password, they can be leaked. They are complicated to be stored, to saved, uh, to shared. So they're not great. And a better solution is to use an identity because an identity is linked to a resource, for example, to a VM, and there's no password that can be um, leaked or shared. Uh, a real world example would be your passport. If you go to the airport, you give the passport to a border control agent, they check the passport, and then they let you through. And in Azure, I think every resource nowadays uh, supports managed identities. So you can just activate the identity and then this resource, for example, a VM or also an AKS cluster has an identity. The problem with this approach is that the entire cluster has an identity, but not our pods. Usually we have one cluster with many applications inside this cluster and all our applications need different permissions and access. Uh, the simplest case would be you have a test environment and a production environment. And obviously the test environment should access the test database or the test key vault. And the prod environment should access the prod database and the prod key vault. So if your cluster has an identity, then you can't separate that. And the solution for this is Entra workload identity. Because with Entra workload identity, you can give all your pods an identity. So all the pods in the test namespace get an identity and the pods in the prod namespace get a different identity. And with this identity, the pods can access securely Azure resources without the need for any username or password. The only requirement your pods have is that you add the Azure workload identity use label um, on the pod. Otherwise, they're not able to uh, use the identity. And there are also additional uh, labels available. For example, you can configure the expiration time for your token. And I will post a link in the description to the documentation where I can see all the labels that are available. And with this, let's jump into the terminal and create a cluster, a key vault, and configure Entra workload identity. Before we get started, let's define a couple of variables. So we define a name for a resource group, a name for our AKS cluster, a location, then the name for a key vault. And here it's important that this name for the key vault must be unique worldwide. So if you try out the demo yourself, you have to change this name. Then we provide a name for a secret, which we're going to create in the key vault and we query our subscription ID. And then we have a couple more variables. So here we configure the namespace and the name for a service account. We're going to use this service account to link it to an Azure identity. Then we have the name of the identity and we also have the name for a federated identity. I'm going to into more details what they are once we are going to use them. So with the variables set up, let's create a new resource group. And once the resource group is created, let's create a key vault. And for the key vault, we provide the resource group name, the key vault name and the location. And we also enable the RBAC authorization. And this allows us to use um, identities and Azure RBAC to access our secrets. That's also the recommended way how to manage the access to the secrets. If you've created 
a keyword in the past, you might be using access policies, but that's an outdated approach nowadays. Next up, I'm going to assign myself the key vault administrator role. So we provide the role as key vault administrator, then my email address and the scope, which is the key vault. And the great thing about the setup with the variables is if you try out the demo yourself, um, you only have to define the variables and then you copy and paste the command. And obviously you have to update your email address. And also, as always, all the instructions will be on GitHub and the link will be in the description. So now we have created the key vault. We have assigned the role to myself. And with this, we can now create a secret in this key vault. So we provide the name for the key vault, the name for the secret, and as a value, we provide this a secret. And this value, um, should be possible or uh, should be available in the pod after we have set up everything. So we are going to use this secret to test the access. And lastly, we just query the URL of the key vault because we have to configure our pod to access this key vault later. And with the key vault set up, we can now create our AKS cluster. And there again, we provide the resource group name, the location, and the name for the cluster. And then we provide two additional flags, the enable OIDC issue, that's for the open ID connect. That's um, a standard which we will use to get the token from Microsoft Entra. And then we also use the enable workload identity flag to, as the name suggests, enable the workload identity feature. Creating the cluster will take around five minutes. So I'll be back once the cluster has been created. The cluster has been created and now we configure the access to the key vault. So let's clean up this window. And first we're going to query the URL of our OIDC issue. And this URL will be used to get a token from Entra ID. Next, we are going to create an identity. And for this identity, we provide the name we've created before, the resource group name, location, and also the subscription ID. And this matched identity will be used to access the key vault. And before we can do this, we have to get the client ID of this identity. So we can just um, query the client ID and we can also paste this client ID and then we can see it's just a, a normal ID. And with this client ID, we can assign a role to this ID so the identity can access the key vault. So we're using again the AC role assignment grade command. This time we're using the key vault secrets user role because this role um, should only read the secrets and not match the key vault. As a signee, we're using this time the ID of the identity we just created, and then we provide the same scope to the key vault. Okay, so now our identity has access to the key vault, and now we have to add this identity to our Kubernetes cluster, and then link this identity with our application. So first we have to download the config for our Kubernetes cluster using the AC AKS get credentials command. And I always like to create a new namespace when I try something. So we're going to create a new namespace named workload identity. And then we're going to set our context to workload identity. So I don't have to type the namespace for every command. And this video, I want to try something new. Usually I have the configuration in a separate file, but this time I want to have it in the code directly because this allows me to use variables. And this also allows you to just copy paste the code. So here we define a service account for the workload identity. 
and let me know if you prefer this way or if you have um if you prefer to have several files and each file for one resource so here we create a service account and we provide the id of the match identity we've created before and we also provide the namespace and the name from the variables we've defined before and to apply this we just have to pipe the variable and then the kubectl apply command and this command created a service account in our namespace and now we have to create a federated identity or actually we have to um, use federation for our credentials so let me paste the command and then we take a look at what it does so here we provide a name then we provide the name for the identity that's the identity that has access to our key vault um, then just resource group name the issuer so that's the url to our oidc issuer and here as subject we have the link of our service account and our identity and with this we have the link from kubernetes to our microsoft entra then let's execute this and the great thing about federated identities is that microsoft takes care of the secrets and we don't have to match any secrets and we also don't have any expiring secrets and what's also important is that the propagation of this federated identity might take a couple seconds so i would recommend you to wait half a minute to a minute so you don't run into any problems now we've set up everything so we have our identity the identity has access to our key vault and the last step is to create an application assign the identity to this application or to be more precise to the pod of the application and then we test if we have access to our key vault so let's clean up the window and let me paste the configuration of the pod and there's nothing special about it so we define one pod in the same namespace as we've always worked on then as I said before, we have to provide the Azure workload identity use a true label, otherwise workload identity won't be working. Then we provide the name to the service account. This is important because we use the service account to get the token from Microsoft Entra. And with this token, we get access to the key vault. Then we use a test image from Microsoft um, this allows us to simply test the access to the key vault and if everything works as expected then the pod will paste the value of the secret to the output and as environment variable we provide the name of the key vault and the name of the secret we want to read now let's save this in the variable and then we can apply this variable and now we're gonna wait a couple seconds um, to let the pod start. And then we check if the pod is running. And the pod is running, we didn't have any error messages. So that's great. And now let's take a look at the logs of this pod and let's see if we can see the value of our secret. So you just use kubectl logs, then the name of the pod. And there we can see successfully got secret and we can also see the secret we defined in the key vault before and the great thing about this approach is that we didn't have to provide a, a password a username we didn't have to handle like secret information it's just the identity we gave the identity the permission to access the key vault and then we can already use it with this we are at the end of the demo but i want to go back to the presentation and just show you a screenshot how this whole authentication workflow works. Here we have a simplified workflow of the entire process we just did. So everything starts with the kubelet and the kubelet projects a service account to our application. 
and to be more precise to our pod. And then if the pod wants to access any resources, in our example the key vault, then the pod sends the account token to Microsoft Entra. And then Microsoft Entra uses the OIDC discovery document to check if this token is valid and if Entra trusts this identity. And if this is successful, then Entra issues a token and sends it back to the pod. And then every time our application wants to access any Kubernetes uh, any Azure resources, in, like in our example, the Azure Key Vault, then it sends this token and gets access to the Key Vault. I think this is everything you need to know to get started with Entra workload identity and to apply it to your own Kubernetes cluster. As we've seen today, it's very simple to get started, but it's a great solution to manage access to different Azure resources without having to manage passwords and secrets. In my next video, I'm going to show you another approach, how to get secrets from the Key Vault. We're going to use an extension to synchronize the secrets inside the cluster and have a secure way to store them and to access the secrets. As always, if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment. And if this video was useful, share it to your colleagues. And I see you next time.